so good afternoon, Charlie. I understand you have some uh, important news today. We do. Uh, we, uh, we acquired a network orchestration and software automation company based in uh, Boston, Massachusetts called Rift. Um, so we're, uh, we're extremely excited about the opportunity. So um, first, can you tell us a little bit about DZS? Not everybody is familiar with this name. Is it a new company? It's not a new company. You know, DZS uh, has been around for almost 20 years. Uh, it's a public company traded on the NASDAQ. Uh, we, uh, uh, at the core of what we've done for most of the years is delivering uh, broadband access, uh, voice data and video services to the home and enterprise. Uh, we've most recently uh, expanded our portfolio to include uh, mobile transport solutions. So we're in big networks like SoftBank and LGU, uh, uh, Rocketon's uh, next generation 5G network in, in Japan. Um, we just uh, had the two best consecutive quarters in the company's history in, in Q3 and Q4. Uh, last year was a phenomenal year from a, from a mobile standpoint. Our, our revenues grew almost 150% year over year. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time to be at DZS. So it's not a startup company. It's, it's an established player here. Could you, you say a little bit about the portfolio and, you know, where are you guys located? And Yeah, so we, we just moved the world headquarters to, to Dallas, um, which is where I've been. It's been home for me for about 20 years. Uh, but we have about 1,000 customers that span 100 countries around the world. We've got about 20 million products deployed around the world. So uh, to your point, uh, we're not a, a, new, a new brand, a new name. Um, you know, the company's been around in this space for a long time. And, you know, we compete with uh, companies like Nokia and Adtran, uh, Calix uh, on the fixed wireline side. And on the mobile side, it's, 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 you know, it's an emerging space. And, you know, as, as Open RAN really takes hold, you know, it's a, a great opportunity for companies like us, especially a company that is putting a lot of energy behind, uh, you know, uh, you know, open standards and, and an ecosystem that's being fostered by uh, companies that are delivering best in class products uh, inside the network. All right. And uh, what about this, this company that you're acquiring, Rift? What, what are they principally known for? Yeah, so Rift, uh, you know, was a venture backed company uh, started about seven years ago. Uh, so they've raised uh, quite a bit of money uh, developing a state of the art, open stacked, uh, standard based uh, software orchestration uh, around the whole SDN and NFB space. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you think about where the industry is going, you know, as it relates to some part or all of the network functions, you know, being virtualized and managed by cl cloud resources, uh, Rift has really uh, been a leader and an innovator in, in this particular area. And they've been working very closely with a lot of the tier one operators around the world. Uh, and for us, you know, selfishly, it's given us an opportunity you know, to acquire the company at a time where they were making really good progress with some of the larger mobile operators around the world. And, and uh, aside from, you know, the standalone platform that they have, which, which also, you know, delivers some very key uh, technologies and solutions around uh, things like 5G slicing, uh, what it really does, frankly, is it gives us the opportunity to unlock the value of our install base around the world and be able to provide a more intelligent end-to-end -end, uh, software automated solution sets uh, to our customers. So are there um, opportunities in particular that you're, you're going after with uh, the two companies now? Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, we're, we're gonna continue to pursue, you know, the, the, the tier one operators that, that they, you know, have work streams underway right now. Uh, but I think you're gonna see us accelerate uh, the integration of many of the software attributes in our existing uh, mobile products, as well as our fixed broadband access products. So um, one final question, and that's sort of about the, the market dynamics. There, there's a lot happening in this space, of course, um, both the network architecture, as well as kind of the dance between the vendors and replacing some vendors for national security concerns. How do you see this, this space developing this year? I mean, look, it's an exciting time to be in access. You know, I've been in this industry my entire professional career. And, you know, as you pointed out with uh, the dynamics that are happening around the world, uh, you know, the geopolitical dynamics are certainly opening up opportunities for, uh, you know, suppliers like us, where some of the Chinese suppliers are being de-emphasized. 
But I think more importantly, you, you just see the demands that are being placed on uh, the network and there's more capacity and um, more bandwidth that's being required by consumers and enterprises. And you know that certainly is giving us an opportunity to upgrade the existing network from sub one gig to 10 gig. And you know we we're even talking to some customers today about 25 gig on the fixed wireline side. You know, on the mobile side, it, you know, with the advent of in, in the acceleration of 5G uh, and just the, the, the significant changes in the architecture from LTE or 4G, you know, the densification, you know, has a, you know, 10x magnification as it relates to the way uh, the networks are being architected. And, you know, you, you have new technologies uh, that are evolving in, in order to uh, be able to deliver those solutions. So, uh, it's a, it's an exciting time to be in access. All right. Well, fantastic. Thanks for sharing the news today and looking forward to hearing more from you guys in the near future. Well, it was great to see you. Thank you so much.